Well, uh, thank you to Halifax uh, for inviting me and also Wattpad for uh, hosting. Um, I'm going to make a disclaimer. I work for Nova Scotia Power, and as you can imagine, because of the hurricane, there was a lot of work going on. And I've been working on 12-hour shifts since fr Friday. Uh, pre pre before uh, Fiona hit us, uh, they pre stages in different pl places just to get ready. And so if my brain looks a little bit slow, for, please understand. Uh, well, anyways, I'm going to start. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to speak about some uh, fancy stuff we're currently, currently doing. Uh, with um, all data and trying to combine the legacy data we have with the new data that is coming through with, with the smart meters. So I'm going to start the intro with a little bit of about me. I'm a data nerd. I've done a little bit of math, physics. I work also in healthcare in the past in doing epidemiology, and now I'm doing energy. Always though dealing with data and trying to find insights and do predictions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, currently, I'm a, my role is being a load forecaster. I do forecasts on mid to long term. We have other forecasters who do it short term. In my case, I do it on a um, one year and up to 10 years basis. So the company can, uh, and the government can make decisions about where to go in terms of their capital expenditures, or also what are, what are maybe, uh, Things, things needs to phase out from the system. Uh, but also, I'm the data, one of the data science meetup hosts. So if you know me for a while, you know that I've been hosting these meetups. And thanks to Halihax, now we partner together. So we're going to be bringing those uh, starting next month. Well, we already had one event, but this is, this is not the data science meetup event. Uh, happily to be here, though. Uh, I'm also I'm a volunteer lead for Data for Good Maritimes chapter, uh, which is a volunteer-led group of data enthusiasts that help not uh, with their data analytics needs. You should have a look on that because if you ever feel, uh, I should have put a link, uh, if you ever feel like you have a little bit of free time and, uh, and ready to help some non-profits, they, they always short staff, so it would be nice to do some data analysis for them. All right. So back in, in 2019, uh, we started to upgrade all the 500, around the 500,000 uh, electric meters we have into uh, small meters. We call them AMIs, Advanced Metering Infrastructure. But you know, the, uh, out there in the public, they're known as small meters. Currently, we have about 95% of customers that have been upgraded, but not all of them have been uh, getting the benefits of, their, of, the, of the information. We have about 80% uh, of bills that are being created through the MI system, but we need to get there, and we're gonna get there by the end of the year, at the worst, uh, uh, the beginning of the next year. Uh, we, es we estimate that we will collect every, every year about uh, 15 terabytes of data from smart meters, and that's gonna get piled up every, every year. Um, and we also have other system and other t data tables that we can merge to that, but this is, let's call it, it's a dynamic table that is filled every day with the information that we collect from your premises, guys. Uh, some of the benefits to have of smart meters include daily remote reading, uh, be better insights. We're gonna have websites in which you can go and see your daily uh, consumption, so perhaps you can adjust your own consumption, and also we, we will give you some estimate about from that, you know, kilowatt hour you spend during the day, what, what portions are being uh, uh, waste or, or, or used in terms of heating uh, and, other, and other appliances. Uh, we're also gonna improve our response times because if a um, smart meter is sending data all the time, we can also see when they're shut down, especially when we have a storm, uh, and we can sort of triangulate where, where those outages or, or broken meters are. And what I'm gonna be talking about later today is new optional time of use tariffs. We're gonna offer a tariffs in which perhaps if you adjust your consumption, you'll get a benefit in your, in your bill, and we're gonna get a benefit that we're gonna shave some of the peak demand out of the system. Uh, after that, uh, after you collect the data, the meter, the, the data is sent to a meter ma data management system 
MDM, where we store the data for two years. Uh, but that data is, gets replicated right away into a, a system in which we, the analysts, use, and also the billing system send you the, the final bills. But before we get there, uh, the all meter data uh, do not become useless right away. Um, the, uh, this legacy consumption information can, can be organized in a way that combined, can be combined later on with the smart meter data because you know the customer is still the same. We still have a number for you, your number, you know, 10, and we have all the legacy historical data from you, which uh, if you were familiar for, with, you would get a bill every two months. So that's the frequency in which data was coming. Now with the smart meter, that frequency will change. It's, it's much faster. But we wa still want to use that data in order to do some type of train analysis per customer or per groups of customers. Um, so as I said, uh, the company has decades of customer data that we can, can be leveraged for trend analysis and attach at the starting end of the new smart meter data. So I'm gonna, uh, gonna talk to you about a little big project we did a couple of years ago, uh, just to get in preparation for the smart meter data. Uh, so one of the, as in the bullet two says, uh, when in the, in the old system, when we used to build, uh, send a bill to you, we, uh, the meter reader, the person who goes to your house, would come at different dates. Someone will go on the Monday first, uh, another one, uh, meter reader will come on the second day, and third, and so and so. So you can imagine that you have a table with uh, the read, how many kilowatt hours you, you consume between the last month and the current month with a date attached to it. And every single customer have more or less a different date. So what we're thinking is with the smart meter now, it's going to be so easy to aggregate information and say, you know, I want every customer information for the end of the month, the 30th or the first, uh, 31st of the month. It will be very easy. So how can we attach the old legacy data with the new data and, and try to make it more or less calendarized, we call it. Uh, so uh, we create a little bit of a, uh, automated code where uh, we will feed, uh, the, the, the table looks better there than here, but this is a table uh, and I, I make invisible all the account numbers and all that information, you don't care. Uh, but you can see that you would get bill dates and, and the other interesting quantity will be the uh, usage. These are kilowatt hours. And and as you see, there's so many different dates of consumption there. So how can we organize this data or estimate this data in a way that uh, all, all, the, all the consumption dates are on the 31st, let's say, of the month? So just to make a, a um, toy example of this, if you would have a, a, almost a three years here of data, uh, sorry, uh, two, two years of data, uh, and it comes every two months, you would plot, you can plot it on a sales versus time, and every two months you would have the consumption. This could be, for example, this could be one cu customer, and it would, it would look this way. So uh, the task that we wanted to do is, can we shift this, and every line here indicates the, the, the end of the month, so can I shift those points automatically for all the customers uh, and shift it to at the beginning of the month? And also, we also wanted to, because if they come every two months, we also wanted to interpolate and go to a monthly level. So can we turn these, uh, these reads or, or this consumption every two months into a one month? So how can we do that? So the first things we did is we turned that previous figure into a cumulative uh, sales figure. So it's basically the, the points that I showed you before, but now it's cumulative. So every month you get the aggregate from the previous one. That's why you see it always going up. This is the same customer I showed you before. It's just on aggregate level. Uh, this is gonna result in a much easier way to follow and do math with it. Because uh, if from that previous figure that I, sh I show you, I calculate this difference, the difference between two consecutive points divided by the time, that's basically the rate that you're paying. Now, depending on this time period, 
It could be the daily rate, it could be the monthly rate, so on and so on and so. It depends on how uh, granular is your data. So as if you want to remember something uh, from your calculus days, when T2 approaches to T1 in this series, this quantity here uh, looks like a, der a derivative. So uh, for in, in codes, in most of the code these days, you could use Python and R. Uh, if you use some type of interpolation routine, these are easily calculated. It's very, it's, you just call, you know, give me the interpolation. And the derivative of the interpolation is very easy to calculate, so it's automatically. So we try to find the, these functions. And then if you want to understand uh, to calculate the sales between a period, let's say T1 is the first day of the month and T2 is the last day of the month, uh, you calculate the integral of that and that will give you an approximate value. So from that figure that I showed you before, we first wanted to turn from every two months into, one, into a monthly series. So we end up having these little dots here. But just to check how far away these ones are from here, we can also, also add them every two points. We can add them just to get into the bi-monthly series. And I'm just plotting that figure here. The, the points are shift because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to go from building this, this customer on the 15th into the 31st. And, and here, uh, I forgot to tell you, I'm doing a, a spline interpolation, which is a type of a cubic interpolation. And it does a pretty good job. So I did this for one customer, but once you find that, cost, that, that uh, uh, algorithm for one customer, of course you can replicate it and do it for the 500,000 extra customers. And what you end up is with a huge organized table for all customer premises, and, and it's very organized. Well, in this case, I put it on the first, but you can do it on the, on the 31st. And it's very easy to handle. You can, you know, if other teams in your company want a smaller set of this data, you just can easily, in this case, we can, uh, we also uh, label them by premise number, so we can give them a smaller table, and it's gonna be easy, for, especially in the company, we also have people who work with Excel, so you have to give them something more simple to, to use, so if we give them something very well organized, it's easy for them to analyze and do whatever they want with it. So now we're going to have that legacy data very well organized, ready to attach in the starting point of the MI data. So let's get back to smart readers. So one of the things I mentioned is that among the benefits of the MI reads is the ability to offer new optional uh, rates for customers. So currently we have a pilot going on, and it aims to lower the bills of customers that are willing to change uh, their consumption habits. Here, uh, we make a little survey at the beginning of for, for these pilot customers. What were, what were the most likely things to do during the starting of the program? And this is what they uh, told us. That uh, they, they would change when they wash their clothes. So they will adapt the time at which they wash in the clothes. Uh, they also would run their uh, dishwasher overnight. Uh, that's 68% uh, of the, the customers who are enrolled in this program. And 65% uh, uh, of them would keep the lights turned off during uh, peak hours, and so and so. Uh, we had two new rates, and I'm going to explain you what are the rates. Uh, one is called CPP, another T TOU. I will explain what, what are those. We had, these are where the targets uh, in terms of how many customers we wanted to enroll in this pilot. For CPP, we're about 500. For TOU, we're about 1,000. CPP wasn't that popular, uh, you know, we, you, you can't for, force people, so it is what it is. So we got about 60% of them on CPP, but a very good number, 76% uh, TOU. And I'm gonna explain now what are those. So CPP, or critical peak pricing, basically uh, when uh, the, the company will send uh, these customers an email or some type of communication that a peak event is coming. And peak event is basically, all Nova Scotian during the winter time using their equipment, electronics at the same time. And that puts a lot of pressure on the system because we have to create that energy. And if we can sort of move people away from using their electronics or their appliances at that time, that will benefit the entire system. So uh, currently we're charging 
150 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, when they send you th this email at 4 p.m. the day before, uh, it's only during the winter, and it's for about uh, four hours. In all other hours in the winter period, and all hours during the summer and the, in the spring, it stays of a flat rate of 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's a hefty jump. You go from 13 to 150, but the, 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 the takeoff is, is basically that you have to adapt and try not to use uh, your appliances when it's more expensive. So overall, you, you're supposed to get, uh, uh, you know, if you, you change your habits, your consumption habits, you will get uh, savings at the end of the day. The other one uh, is, so the, oh, so the other details about this is we cannot, uh, the company cannot call more than 22 winter peak events, so no more than 22 emails during a year, and no more than th three within a week. Um, the, 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 the other tariff is called time of use, and this one has, uh, it costs about 32 cents per kilowatt hour on weekday peak hours, and 16 the rest. Um, and this, you don't, you're not gonna get an email. You always need to be, uh, we, we, we tell the customer what are the hours they shouldn't be, or they should be changing their habits, and they, this, this time, these time periods are fixed, so it's basically they have to change their habits during the whole winter period. They're not going to get any advice from us, a, a, a peak event is coming. No, you got to adapt for the entire winter period. And that's the difference. It's basically the double, double what it cost you before. Uh, so for some reason, this is getting more popular than this one. Uh, we also suspect there's a lot of people who didn't need to change their habit that much. When they saw this tariff, they probably say, hey, this is me. So I'm going to get a benefit right away, right? So now, so the question uh, the uh, analytics team, uh, the low forecasting team was asked is, how do we measure the effectiveness of this program? So uh, it, it all, and as I mentioned there, it all is a, it's all about matching. So uh, we early on decide that, uh, and also with consultants, uh, that per every customer in this pilot, it was going to be good to identify a similar customer that consumes energy at the same rate, but also has a similar demographics profile. Because you can imagine, even if you consume the same uh, energy that uh, two, custom two customers can look, look alike in terms of consumption, they may have a different house, they may have different insulation, different even uh, uh, heating equipment during the winter time. So uh, you, you try to reduce the variance by, by, uh, by looking, uh, by pair them together. So once you find the match, then you could do a statistical analysis and it can estimate the average savings per period. So how do we control for house and premise demographic differences? So as I mentioned, uh, consumption of two customers may be affected differently by the level of the heating insulation the premise has, the location, you're right, these tariffs are available for all Nova Scotians, but someone who lives in Halifax has a different weather than someone who lives in Cape Breton. So, and, and your thermostats, or during the winter time especially, you'll turn it on and off depending on your local weather. Uh, and also, it, it changes with your heating appliance, etc. Now, Nova Scotia Power, for good reason, does not collect demographic information from you. We do run service once, customer service once, once in a while, and that will give us a sample idea. So how can we, uh, how can we make sure that we are pairing two customers that really look alike? So we came up with a, um, a clever algorithm in which we do a neighborhood uh, criterion. So uh, first of all, you start thinking, okay, I wanna minimize, minimize the, the variance between the weather, so we need to look at people in the area. Uh, so you can look at postal codes, or you can look at coordinates, so, and, and try to make that distance minimum. Uh, and we in the power company, we also know that even if two houses are very close by, they can be fed by a different line, and that can tell you a little bit about the history of that neighborhood. One neighborhood could have come up decades before the other one, even if they are next to each other. So we drew a line, and here I'm showing here, this is the map how it looks in our system. And unfortunately, it doesn't, the resolution is not helping here. But here, I'm sh this is Young Street, uh, this is Almond Street, 
And, and the blue line here is a feeding line that is feeding all the customers around this area. And if you only do a criteria in which you try to find uh, close neighbors, you may find yourself paired with a customer who is on the line versus someone who is not in the line. So the criteria uses two approaches. Uh, uh, you need to match to be in, in the neighborhood in terms of uh, distance, but also you need to be on the same feeder. So once you, you fix that, you can claim that you have reduced the variance between these two customers. And variance could be, again, the quality or, or the conditions of your, or the houses. It could be income. So all of these are being reduced by this approach. We don't have the exact information, but through the service, you can compare your assumptions versus the service we have. And we've done a, a pretty decent job in that respect. So once we've done that uh, location or neighborhood-based approach, uh, the next thing we're going to do is match by uh, consumption behavior. So uh, we can compare this time series uh, uh, between these two nearby candidates with a, a metric called Euclidean distance, and it's, it's done here. It's not that difficult to understand. It's basically the sum of the difference of squares, if you put the, in this graph, in a graph time versus consumption, you put two customers together, you calculate those differences, you sum them up, and you come up with one number. So you can imagine I can do this for several, several candidates and, and, and find the minimum, and then I can have the, 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 the closer control that I can use for later comparison. So by having the two, the two approaches, the neighborhood plus this uh, Euclidean distance approach, I can find the right controls. So because we have about hundreds or up to thousands of customers, I didn't want to sh show you the individual customers. So what I did is aggregate, and I calculate averages. So in the left-hand side, I'm doing a comparison of the, of the pilot averages of the, all the customers in the pilot versus uh, the control, but this control is every customer in Nova Scotia. So there's no filtering by neighborhood, there's nothing like that. So you, basically you see a larger gap compared to this one that does use that approach that I'm showing you before. So now we have a way to estimate, um, ah, and I forgot to tell you, I do these comparisons before the pilot start, because once the pilot start, of course your behavior have changed so you're not apples to apples anymore. So you do these, these studies historically with the historical data with one or two years in the back before the pilot start. So then you decide who are your controls, and then you move further and you see the differences as time goes by. So here I'm showing you uh, the savings, basically, uh, in average. Uh, um, so I'm showing you two types of, of customer groups. We have the non-electric and electric. The difference is that uh, we have customers who have heating, uh, using electric heating, and some other customers who, do, who don't have uh, electric heating. So it's basically around the peak hours, you will have a jump. This is basically the difference between control and pilot. And you, you do see the jump at the peak hours. We usually have, in wintertime, either morning peak hours or, or evening peak hours. And they sometimes happen at 7 a.m., 8, 8 a.m., or around 6 p.m. So those are the savings. Now, we had to file recently, very, very recently, as last month, a, a, a progress report uh, to the utility and review board just to show how we're going. Now, this pilot runs for two years, and then we're going to decide if either we're going to stick it that way and, 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 and offer it to everyone, or maybe we'll do some changes. Uh, so overall, when you aggregate all the customers, that these are the quantities we're saving, which is about 12 to 10% in their usage uh, in, the, in the evening and, and morning peaks. So, you know, it's looking good. Um, and next year is the final is going to be the final year, so we'll be uh, more confident with the results. Now, finishing it, uh, as I said, uh, we now we are in this big data domain in which, uh, and another thing I forgot to say is that we are collecting data from customers every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, uh, the meter that you have outside your house is storing data, and once a day, they, they've been read. 
So you, you get all those 15 minutes that you collected during, uh, during a day. So suddenly from going to two months, every, we will get your information every two months. Now you, you're, we're getting your information every 15 minutes. So it became big all of a sudden. So our analytics are going to get enhanced because of that. And, and, and we're going we're gonna to combine the old legacy consumption data with the MI data just to get new insights about our customers. And as I said, the control group matching, the Euclidean distance, are satisfactory metrics uh, to evaluate the pilot uh, savings versus uh, the regular customers. Thank you.